what we have here is the Blackmagic Hyperdeck Studio HD Plus, and it is a recorder. So it has recently replaced my Video Assist 12G. Here it is. As my go-to recorder for on set. A few reasons why. First of all, it's a lot smaller. I don't need a tripod to use it. As well as we get a lot more inputs on the back. Lastly, it has ethernet control. So what I can do is I can fire up the Hyperdex software. Here it is. And here we go. We see Hyperdex Studio HD Plus. I can change a few settings. But what that means is we can control all of its functions through OSC. And so that's what we're going to be exploring today. So to do that, we need a program called Companion. Oop, here it is. Companion. So it's a free program. It's on GitHub. I'll put a link in the description. This is designed to use a stream deck from Elgato to control it. However, we can also control it through OSC, which is what we'll be doing today. So we'll be setting up a record button in our OSC so we can hit it and it'll start recording on the Hyperdeck. Now we could also tie that to sequencer record and our camera. So companion can also control my BGH one from Panasonic. So we could set one record button on open stage control and it'll record Unreal, the Hyperdeck and your camera all at the same time, which makes for very, very smooth operation. So let's have a look at how we do the Hyperdeck part. So I'm going to go ahead and launch companion just like this. And we're greeted with this little thing. It starts a web server. So the way it works is it just runs in your browser. So I'm going to hit launch GUI and then that'll disappear. Uh, no, it's not going to disappear. I'm going to hit hide and then it disappears. And we are greeted with this. You might get something different if it's the first time you've installed it. You'll get a thing asking you to set a default password, stuff like that. But eventually you'll get to this screen here. And the first screen here is how we connect to all our devices. So as you can see, we have some Azure stuff. If I just type at the top black magic here, here we go. So we can control various black magic products, multi views, hyperdex, which is what we'll be using as, as well as things like video hub presenters and the ATM minis, which is really cool. Then if I search Lumix, then there's our camera control if I wanted to go down that road. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and add the black magic hyperdeck. Here it is. Just hit the add button to it. Next, we have a few settings here. I can give it a label. If we have multiple of them, I can choose the model we're using. So we're using the HD plus. I need a target IP address so I can find that either on the hyperdeck itself by going into the menu okay. or alternatively, I can just hit the little button here and grab it in the hyperdeck studio software instead. Alrighty, go ahead and paste the target IP in here and then hit save and it'll say connecting and then okay. So it's connected. So now we can control it using companion. So what I'm going to do is go to the next tab here, which is called buttons. Now this is where you would set up your stream deck, but we also need to set this up even if we're controlling it with OSC. So I'm going to click the first button and choose a regular button here. I'm going to call it record like so. Now on the press action, I'm going to hit browse and then you see our hyperdeck shows up here and then I'm going to hit record. Next on the next button over, I'm going to hit create another button. I'm going to call this one stop and then I'm going to browse and then I'm going to choose the stop button here. So the way the hyperdeck works is the record button records. So I hit it and we start recording but the record button doesn't stop recording. Instead, we need to hit the stop button to actually stop recording. Pretty common thing, so you don't accidentally bump it, stuff like that. So we've set up both a record and a stop. We can test that, so we can hit test action, starts recording, hit test action on the stop, stops recording. Now, to use this in OSC, we just look down here at the bottom and you can see right here, it says hint. Control buttons with OSC by using this address on this port. Really simple. So what I need to do is I need to add this as one of the things we're controlling in OSC to start with. So I'm going to go over to our open stage control here and hit stop. In the send area, I'm going to hit space and I'm going to type localhost again. Obviously, if this was running on a different computer on your network, it would be something different. I'm going to add in the port, which is using 12321. Then I can go ahead and start it up again. Let's close that. 
Now, I'm gonna put this on this side of the window. I'm gonna grab this one. I'm gonna refresh our control here, open up our session we've been working on. Enter edit mode and add some record buttons. I'm gonna do it at the top just so they're easy to access. So I'm gonna add two of them, button and button. This one I'm going to rename and call it record. And this one I'm going to call stop. Like so. Oh, whoops. Oh, I changed the time to stop. All right, so we've got our record button and our stop button. Record I'm gonna leave as, so under button, here we go. I'm gonna leave it as toggle so it can be turned on and off like that. For stop, however, I'm gonna change this to push. So stop will go on and off like that, but the record will go on and off. Next on record, I'm actually gonna change its style and just gonna change its widget color or specifically the widget fill to be a nice sort of red for record. There we go, let's try that. Yep, perfect. Lastly, what I need to do is I need to plug in these values. So make sure we have record clicked and then I'm gonna copy this address here. Oops, make sure I don't grab the space at the end. Copy it and under OSC, I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in. Then for the stop, I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna click the button. I'm gonna grab this one, copy it and paste it into the address on OSC. <clears throat> go ahead and hit save and disable the editor. And now if I hit record, boom. If I hit stop, it stops. Now, you see that the record button is still highlighted. So you would think, why don't we make that a push button like the stop so that it sort of turns it on and off really quickly. We could, however, I want an indicator to know, hey, we're recording because I might not be able to see the hyperdeck from wherever I am. So I want an indication, hey, you pressed record and it's recording. So how do we do that? Well, we need to do a little bit of JavaScript coding. And we're gonna do that on the stop button. So when I hit record, I want it to highlight record like it is now. And then I want to, it to stay like that until we hit the stop button. And then I want the stop hitting the stop button to also clear the record button. So to do that, I'm going to get rid of some of these. I'm gonna to go to the scripting tab and the on value. So on value is when, on create is when it is created. So when we first open the session and on value is whenever the value changes. So in that case, when we press it, the value momentarily changes to one. So it's going to run this command again, or going to run this script. So this is scripted in JavaScript, but we don't need anything complicated. So that's okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to set the value of this button back to zero. So when I press stop, it'll also set record to zero, which will clear it. So to do that, I'm gonna use set. I'm gonna open brackets and close them again. In here, I'm going to go parentheses, like so. I'm gonna type record. So we want the button name I wanna control, which is in this case, this button ID is just record as it is in the tree down here. So we're gonna set this button. I'm then gonna go comma. Now, next I need to type a value. So I wanna set it to zero, like so. Then I'm going to go a comma. And the last thing we need to do is we need to add an option to it not to send its OSC value because companion doesn't actually rely on the float value. It doesn't care if it's a zero or one. It'll simply do it. So when by setting by default, if we ran it like this, it would trigger record again. And then so it would like stop recording and start recording immediately, um, which is very annoying and we don't want that. So what I'm going to do is comma, and then I'm going to do the squiggly brackets. I have no idea what their actual name is called. And then I'm going to type send colon false. So what this means is the send attribute is going to be set to false. So when this code runs, it'll update the value of the record button, but it won't send that over OSC, which means we don't get a double record. So go ahead and save it again, and let's try it out. Save, and then I'll turn off the editor. All right, so stop. Just make sure we clear that value. Okay, so I'm gonna hit record. We start recording. The box is highlighted, so I know it's recording. Then I'm gonna hit stop, and it stops recording, and the record button turns off. Awesome, record, stop. 
record stop record stop so this javascript is also how we could hook up this record button to trigger multiple things at once so if we wanted to also trigger our camera to record or unreal to record we could use the javascript to send multiple osc from the one button and just like that we have a sort of universal record button on our osc controller for virtual production hopefully you found that informative and useful thanks for watching and i'll see you later